Hello, and welcome to Breast Cancer Conversations, a podcast brought to you by survivingbreastcancer.org. I am Laura Carfang, breast cancer survivor and founder of survivingbreastcancer.org, a nonprofit organization providing community, education, and resources to empower those diagnosed with breast cancer and their caregivers from day one and beyond. Hello, hello, my friends. I am so excited that you are joining us for our legacy episode today. Today, I am thrilled because we did our very first SBC workshop. So shout out to our NBC leadership team for putting this together. People can definitely expect more workshops and series coming out for the metastatic community. We're trying to aim for quarterly. So definitely keep your eyes out for information on that. If you haven't already signed up for our newsletter, head over to survivingbreastcancer.org forward slash subscribe. Today, we hear the voices of those living with metastatic breast cancer, anywhere from just being newly diagnosed with MBC all the way to living out into the double digits. So we're going to hear their stories as well as what legacy means to them. For me, legacy is the unique permanent mark that you leave in someone's life one that propels their heart, mind, body, and soul to be the best version of themselves and leave the world better than how they found it. Welcome to the conversation. I've been living with metastatic breast cancer for four years now. I'm on my fourth line of defense. I'm actually doing good on this new medicine I'm on. The legacy means to me is just I have four children and two grandbabies. So just leave something behind for them. They wanted me to leave stories behind for them. So that actually got me started on that. I've been living with NBC for about four and a half years. I don't know how many lines of treatment I've been on already. Legacy means a few things from, you know, leaving all the passwords to all my computer accounts so that transitioning out of my virtual life is easy. You also have a book with various writing prompts. Who gave that to you? My son, which has 300 questions in it about uh, like, how do you soothe yourself when you're upset? What in your opinion is strength? Tell about a time you broke something. It's all kinds of questions that give insight into me in various, in lots of different ways. And I'm slowly but surely working my way through it. I've been living with metastatic breast cancer for about three and a half years now. I think I'm on my sixth line of treatment. Um, I haven't had anything to do anything IV yet, so it's all just built in oral stuff. Um, Legacy means to me, I mean, I guess the memories that I leave with the people that I leave. and how I made them feel, I think, more than anything. Um, I want to make sure that they know that I love them. And as far as who I will leave behind, I have three kids. Um, I have three grandkids. Um, My husband and I have been together more than 30 years. And I have my most wonderful cat. I've been living with metastatic breast cancer since January of 2019, so about three and a half years. Just started the 43rd cycle of my first line of treatment, so I feel fortunate. But, you know, always waiting when you get to that point. When is the blood work going to change? When are the scans going to change? And my legacy, I work in healthcare and I do imaging. So I'm currently trying to plop out a plan where we change the... um, perspective of care, the person um, providing the care uh, to patients, like the techs, the lab people making awareness about what we think and how we feel. So I hope to be able to do something in a professional standpoint. And personally, I feel like I want to leave the world a better place. So just a little bit of kindness, want to leave memories. I never had my own children. So I have nieces and nephews, siblings, and my husband. A, f- um, a few close friends. So I hope, and I have four babies. They're my kids, definitely. Um, so I hope uh, I'm able to leave like a lasting impression and a memory and they're able, I like acts of kindness. That's my love language. So I hope that I'm able to instill that in those around me. I've had MBC for four years and I, I think legacy means to me instilling values in the people around me that they always know that I love them. 
I don't have my own children, but I have nieces and nephews who are amazing and funny and crazy, wild and all that. Um, so I just hope that they, you know, remember me as someone who loved them a lot. September 11th, I will be hitting eight years um, after a metastatic de novo diagnosis to my liver. I got to enjoy this last year with no scans. Uh, I had a full year. It was lovely. And um, this last week, they saw something on my CT scan. So I'm going to need that progression um, <laughs> reminder and talk of where to go from there. I've only been on one line of treatment. I have been very lucky. Um, so, you know, with everybody, you just wait for that shoe to drop. Legacy to me is really threefold. It's the past and bringing the past into us now, um, the future, uh, you know, present and future. We have bought a side of a mountain that we are all going to live on. I'm amazed my children ran away from me, and then they want us to come and follow them. Um, I'm actually going to build a pub <laughs> on the front of the property, and I am writing recipe books for both of my children that include handwriting from my great-grandparents, my grandparents, my mother, um, and making sure they have pictures and the history of where things came from, as well as um, present day, my recipes, and hopefully they'll be able to hand that on to their children. I'm, I'm hoping I get to see grandchildren someday, but um, I'm preparing for just leaving something for them. I was diagnosed in 2015. So I've been living with metastatic cancer for seven years and four months. I'm in my seventh line of treatment. What does legacy mean to you? Leaving nice memories to be remembered by, uh, making an impact in my community, in my world, in my family. Defining legacy, I, I have no idea. I mean, trying to be a positive person and leaving behind something that uh, I made a, a difference in some in anybody. My, I will be leaving um, uh, my husband, uh, 32 years, and uh, two adults, uh, call them boys. They're young men, and uh, a lot of extended family. Thank you. I have been living with uh, metastatic disease for, it'll be seven years um, this October, and I was diagnosed with stage two um, like a year and a half before that, and while everybody was talking, I was counting my lines of treatment, so I just started my 10th line of treatment. Legacy means to me, I guess, leaving memories of myself, like hopefully positive memories <laughs> um, with experiences, I guess photos and, you know, just general advice. I've been living with NBC for three and a half years. And that is about um, 13 years out from an early stage diagnosis. Um, I was very early stage and did all the most aggressive treatments. And despite all that still progressed to metastatic. Um, so legacy to me means a few things. It means, you know, cushioning the blow um, of the loss and the grief and preparing that space so that my loved ones have that space for themselves. Um, and it also means um, a few things like I'd like to donate my body to a cadaver lab. Um, things, you know, like the real nuts and bolts kind of things like that as well. I've been living with the NBC for two years. Before that, my stage one was like a year and a half. Um, what does legacy? It means besides just the memories and pictures and definitely audio and video is big for me because I don't really have that in my parents and it'd be nice to have. Sorry, <laughs> I can't do this without crying sometimes. I think legacy, before this workshop, legacy meant to me kind of my impact on my world. I'm a, um, a therapist for kiddos and families who um, I'm medically retired last year. And so um, I think of my legacy of what my impact was um, 
to the kiddos and families that I worked with, um, but also kind of my impact on my family and my uh, larger group of friends and community. Uh, but I'm hearing lots of great ways to think about legacy from other people today. So I'm thankful for that already. I've been living with NBC for six years now. I'm on my second clinical trial and it's going well. What legacy means to me is that I hope the love that I have for my family and friends will live beyond when I'm gone. I kind of think of it in two ways. And one is a, a little bit more of the less physical. So, um, you know, I hope that part of my legacy is leaving behind a positive impact, both um, personally and professionally. I've been very engaged in my um, professional life, and I have a lot of colleagues who I consider friends, and and I'm now educating them all about NBC. Um, and then the physical aspect, right, is kind of, you know, making sure that there's artifacts and and things that my um, my close family members will have. I will leave behind my husband, and we, we're high school sweethearts, so we've been together 36 years. Um, I have three kids who are 25, 21, and 20, um, and just a lot of great friends. Um, I, too, have a wonderful extended family, so a lot of cousins and things like that. Personal nature, it means how the people that I love will keep me with them. I think as we live with this disease um, over time, that definitely changes and it has for me. So what legacy really means for me is that it encompasses all of the pieces and the memories um, of me that will remain once I'm gone. Uh, it's who I am, how I loved, uh, any acts of, of good or kindness, uh, that I've done throughout my life and um, that I'll be remembered for as well as any impact that I might have made as a patient advocate. I was diagnosed originally with cancer in 2004 and I was diagnosed with metastatic in 2009. So I've lived with it for 18 years and 13 of them at metastatic breast cancer. Um, I have no idea how many treatments I've been on. I just recently started a new one two months ago. Everyone, it's kind of like, I sort of missed the devil I knew, and now I have to learn a new one. Um, so it's always hard. It's, I'm in a hard space right now of transitioning to this new treatment. The legacy part of it for me, I think, has, has shifted because I've been at this for so long. I think 13 years was the longest I've heard here this morning and uh, 18 years total. And um, part of the legacy I think I'm leaving is how I lived with this for this long and that I didn't make it the centerpiece on my table for this long. <laughs> I told friends a few years ago that it's my backpack. I got to carry it. Sometimes it's got a bottle of water and a pack of gum. Sometimes it's got every freaking thing you need for six days out on a, you know, weeks out on a trail. And right now it's at that size feeling like it's the long trek part. And um, so I, I hope that that's part of what people realize is that I didn't give up and I kept my sense of hope. I kept my orientation toward what is, what is in my life. <laughs> I have been living with de novo metastatic breast cancer um, since 2012. I view legacy also as like my heritage because I am Native Hawaiian and um, I do have um, Ukrainian background and there are some things that we have brought down from the Russian part of our family that I would like to not only share the Hawaiian portion and leave the traditions behind but also the Russian portion which tends to be really important to my kids right now. So I have three kids. Um, they are 34, 29, and 27. So they're all off living their own lives. And it's been very interesting having adult children um, and talking about, you know, your potential passing and what my kids want. And my kids do not want stuff. They want memories. Um, there are certain things, yes, in this house 
that they do want and that they're actually fighting over. Um, <laughs> and so I've had to put it in the will of who's going to get the blue quilt. Um, and so um, there are things like that that have meant um, a great deal to them. But for the most part, my kids have always said, um, share with us your traditions. Tell us about who you are, what, where you're from, what our grandparents did, how they got here to the States. Um, you know, what was grandpa doing in um, when Pearl Harbor was bombed? Um, things of that sort is what is really important to them. I have been thinking a lot about what uh, legacy means. Sort of in general, I have four kids. Um, they're all adopted and my youngest is eight and we tell stories. So I think legacy for me <clears throat> is about the stories that we leave behind that people want to share with each other about us. My entire life is not about cancer. It's a big part. But there's much more. And I like how she used the metaphor. It's my backpack. I want to explore that a little bit. I think that was a really fun idea. So I've been living with metastatic breast cancer since I was diagnosed so six and a half years ago. Uh, when I think of what legacy means to me, I think it's the imprint that I leave behind on the people and the roles that I've put, taken on throughout my life. So it's my imprint or impact on people. I'm a mother. I'm a wife. I'm a teacher. I'm a sister, an aunt, a friend, a daughter, a student a cousin, a sister-in-law, and I'm also a patient. And so in terms of all of those roles that I've taken, what imprint do I want to leave behind on those people? As far as legacy, I actually had to sit down and think about it on the survey we were supposed to fill out because I had never kind of sat down to think about and write down what it meant. So I'm going to read what I put, but I have great pointers from many of you as well that I'll be adding. So for me, legacy is the unique permanent mark that you leave in someone's life one that propels their heart, mind, body, and soul to be the best version of themselves and leave the world better than how they found it. I have been living with de novo um, lobular metastatic breast cancer for almost 10 years. It'll be February, it will be 10 years. Um, I am currently in a clinical trial for the first time, and it's uh, my fourth line of treatment fourth or fifth, depending on how you count it. What legacy means to me is, is complex. My life has been compartmentalized and like I had my work life and my work friends. And then I have my advocacy life and my advocacy friends. And then I have my college friends. And then I have, I, we had friends that were when my son was growing up um, that we don't see as much anymore. So I need to work a lot on the personal part of my legacy. I have photos in boxes. I have never put them in albums. My son is 25 and I have never put any of our family photos in albums. Partially, I think is because they started becoming digital, you know, <laughs> and when he was six or five or something. Um, and so I have to figure out kind of how to organize all that. And um, so for me, oh, there's a lot of anxiety because I've been a procrastinator um, and I haven't done a lot of that yet. And I have, so that's part of it, like getting like all my stuff, photos, passwords, et cetera, organized. Uh, I'm of uh, German, Italian and Polish heritage. And uh, uh, I have a daughter who's eight years old. Uh, she has autism. So, yeah, I, I'm trying to put together my history. I, I have lived in a few places in Brazil, uh, moved around um, to the U.S., Germany, uh, because of work, because of um, uh, research, because of studying. And um, I, I feel that she doesn't know me too well, so I, I, I want to put all these things together. Also, a, a family tree. I was able to find uh, a few generations back in, in Poland. Uh, um, I already had uh, a lot uh, from relatives uh, from my ancestors in Germany, and I need to get uh, the Italian side in order. Uh, I'm an art teacher, and so I have my um, community of my students, and I'm, um, I just want to. Yeah, to, while I'm here, make a, 
as much of a positive impact on people as they can and um, just show a lot of love and kindness and um, be a good role model. Um, I don't have any children. I'm, I was an only child. I, my parents are not alive. So I see my legacy as leaving my art and I'm a sculptural bead artist and I do a lot of jewelry and handmade baskets. And what I have wanted to do this year and I've started is um, making pieces for people that incorporate things that are important to them, an old button that maybe their mom had or something like that. And, and just making these pieces. And, you know, I have a wealth of artwork that I've sold and I have a lot that I haven't sold. So I hope those pieces will all go to dear friends. And I find that as a way for them to be able to connect. When I think about the tangible items I will leave behind, um, I hope that they um, remind people of the intangible items, right? The way I made someone feel or a story I told or the way I danced or the way I laughed. And so um, so I've been thinking about that combination of, or whether it's a, intangible, I too, I think of like photo albums or, you know, um, the stories that people are writing, things like that, those tangible items to, um, to remind people of the intangible things that I think are so important. I feel like it's leaving parts of me behind. Um, I love to scrapbook, so I, I'm, I've been doing that. Um, I also have a wedding dress that I am going to... Um, there's a lady that can turn it into a baptismal gown. Um, she can also make it into something that uh, my children can uh, have at their wedding. So that's something I'm going to be working on. I think the first time when I first noticed that I'm NBC, I, I think I quickly prepared the wheel. I think that was the only thing came to mind. And I also um, have a book, like a binder, and then try to put all this, uh, as much information as possible, like the bank statement and all those stuff, just to try to make their life a little bit easier. And then now that I heard all these suggestions and the next things I'm thinking, okay, maybe I should ask them to see what they want. Like, rather than like, because now that if they probably don't want the China, is what exactly do they want? Uh, I guess maybe it's, better to just to get an idea for them from them. I need to reach out and get support that it's not me being negative. It's just, you know, I, a lot of you are talking about sport and caretakers and it's just me and my dog. (laughs) I just have so much always going on and my anxiety has me like an ADD person and, and, you know, and I'm like, I don't know where to start, you know, sometimes. So um, I'm just writing little notes, you know, while I'm listening to y'all and, trying to, you know, lock arms and one step forward. Being Italian means that I have families over there, friends over there. I have family here and friends here. So I have to do everything double. (laughs) So um, I love writing. Writing is my way to express myself. And right now is my way to cope with everything. I've been diagnosed de novo four months ago. So I understood that I'm the cancer-related youngest year um, because it's just four months. And I'm just dealing with this word uh, legacy recently because it's it's kind of a tricky word. Like it's a scary word. And for me, uh, I wasn't ready, but now I think that I'm getting there and I started to writing a book to leave to my children. I count to be around for um, many years because I wanted to see my grandchildren because I also have to teach them Italian and to teach them cooking. That's important because cooking and speaking for me are very, very important. And so I need to be around to to do that with them. I haven't really met very many people, so it's really nice to connect. My intention of like the legacy that I want to leave behind is I just want people to feel like hugged by me when um, they think of me. 
um, Dutch. So we have a lot of like very um, specific meals that my kids have always loved. They remember it from their grandparents who my, my parents, they've already passed away. And I just want that to kind of keep on going. I've been living with NBC since summer 2019. For me, I'm a writer. So I've journaled all of my life. I mean, in high school, I had like volumes <laughs> of journals to document my experience. Um, do I want my kids to read all those? No. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. My best friend is in charge of those, but <laughs> when something happens to me. Thank you everyone for sharing your definitions of legacy, your heritage, your memories, your hopes and dreams of how you want to leave your mark on this planet. This has been such a creative um, and actually healing podcast for us. I really appreciate you guys taking the time to open up and share a variety of opportunities for us to start thinking about legacy. For those listening, I want to give a quick shout out to some of the programs and services that we offer at survivingbreastcancer.org. We meet um, twice a month, actually, for our Thursday Night Thrivers NBC support group. It is peer-to-peer led on the first and third Thursday of the month. So check it out at survivingbreastcancer.org forward slash events. We also have our NBC webinar series that takes place a couple of times a month on Sundays. So that too will also be highlighted on our events page. And we do have a specific resource page for those living with metastatic breast cancer, which you can find at survivingbreastcancer.org forward slash living with NBC. And thank you all for listening and tuning in week after week here on Breast Cancer Conversations. Please be mindful that all of our content and information is for educational purposes only and is never a substitute for medical advice. If you want to hang out again, please check out survivingbreastcancer.org forward slash events where you can RSVP to our Thursday Night Thrivers weekly meetup, our Movement Monday classes, workshops, seminars, and so much more. We can also continue the dialogue online via social media. Our Instagram handle is survivingbreastcancer.org, all one word, and you can follow us on Twitter at SBC underscore ORG. Until next time, keep on thriving.